We Are Stammer or the British Stammering Association. The UK's an, an, an national charity for people who stammer. Founded in 1978, we aim to lead a movement to positively change how society will be stammering, as, 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 as well as to empower and support people who stammer. Over the last five years, we've moved from approaching stammering through a medical viewpoint and instead transitioned to transitioned into a, 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 a social model. In the same amount of time, we've really expanded our membership, which currently, as we speak, stands at just over 6,000 members. These members all <laughs> benefit from the resources, information and support we provide, including our helpline services, uh, on, 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 on online support group and impact support group. We're here today with Ken Semmer, the brilliant Watford midfielder who, 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 whose viral post-match interview sparked an outpouring of positive, positive, positive reaction um, uh, uh, back in February. With, with, with several people who stammer stating that it was incredibly heartwarming to see someone who plays a sport they love, who, who also speaks in the way they do. Here to interview Ken is Rob Cohn, an active member of SAMA, Rob runs the Cambridge Stammering Support Groups and has done so for several years. Um, Rob is also an, 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 an active football player and, and, and uh, writes, writes, writes uh, extensively about football, which I'm personally grateful for because my football knowledge um, sort of extends to where, where, where the goalposts are. So I'm going to hand it over to Rob and Ken for the rest of the interview. Okay. Um... Um, hi Ken, so uh, my two passions in life are um, stammering and football, so um, I hope I'm the perfect person to interview you today. Um, um, I've stammered all my life, um, I can never remember not stammering. Um, I believe that you started stammering when you were six, can you remember yeah. a specific moment when you realised that you had a stammer? Uh... I would not say like that, but it was just weird because all I remember, like, first it was a long time ago, but uh, I remember I came from school and I started to speaking strange, a little bit different than what than I, than I uh, was before. Because uh, before, so when I was younger, I didn't have stuff. I, I spoke perfectly fine, you know, you can call it like that, but I just came home and I, I started to speak strange and and I think at that time I didn't know that I was speaking strange or sure. different that way. And my uh, so my family was like, so what are you so what are you doing that you speak properly as like you used to? And like it just stuck and I was like I was trying to say like yeah but it was from a friend in school yeah. who's, who who spoke who speak like this and I wanna be like this but it wasn't wasn't true. Like I was six years old. Um, yeah. I had my uh, I had my own imagination. I think I guess and it just like stuck, just yeah. stuck with me. And and I I tried to to go to like speech lessons and I'm trying. But the thing is, also when I'm over there, I never stand. Like I never start. I never, like, was trained, but I spoke perfectly fine. So it was like to be fair, like. I don't need this. Yeah. I don't need to be here. Sure. But as soon as I left or was home, it could be different. So I always find them going to a speech therapist to be a very safe environment. It's very quiet, everybody's very relaxed. And as soon as you go out um, into the um, into the open world, you go to a shop, um, you get on a bus, uh, you try to use your phone, um, the stammer just comes back. Um, that's how I feel. Okay. Um, did you? Um, um, did anybody at school stammer, or did anybody in your family stammer? Do you know? Uh, I think in my family, so we has, so we might have something behind. Like uh, it's not like someone now, like my mom and dad, or my siblings, or my my cousins. It's not like this, but I think like my my mom, like in the in my family, as in the past. Yeah might be someone that but no one that I've heard that and I know about so yeah. like, that's my family's only me. So. Yeah, because it's, it could be a combination of so 
uh, genetic factors yeah. or um, um, environmental yeah. factors or um, uh, neurological fa factors as well, yeah. um, uh, big changes in my life and uh, sort of that actually brought on my stammer a lot more. Um, obviously, yeah. so you moved to the UK when you were 25, um, yeah. then you went to spend a year in Italy as well. These must have been some big changes in your life. Did that have an impact on your stammer? I came when I was 24, I think. Okay. Yeah, I was 24. But no, no, but the thing is, the thing is, for me, it's a little bit different because, because obviously, I, I speak different languages. Yeah. And English is not my first language. Yeah. So, like, I speak Swedish like as my first language. Yeah. And I think. I think I find it a little bit easier to speak Swedish yeah. than English. Sure. Because like obviously I speak English well and and I don't have like an issue to speak it. Yeah. But I think in just like in terms of to just just come fall naturally. Yeah. I think Swedish just comes, you know, I mean yeah. you yeah. don't really think about the word or the pronouns or the yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But um, but uh, but I think it was like a change. Also, when I came to UK, obviously sure. I would always speak English, and then and then so it wasn't about the English, but it wasn't about it was, it was about to move country to of course to yeah. play the Premier League, like it's the biggest league in the world, yeah. and you know, like as a footballer, you are out there every day, you know, yeah. like you out interviews, uh, yeah. you're speaking to everyone, like every day, you like everyone knows about you, your your social media, it's, you know, it, it, it's always something. Um, but the thing, I'm like, I'm a guy, I'm not a shy guy, so like, I'm quite a guy, like, I like to be like in the spotlight, like, I don't mind it to be like in a crowd, or I don't know, to dance or to sing or to just, to to be like around where where it happens, you know what I mean? So like I think it's it could be a thing like it might always be be there. So I yeah. so I don't really see like like this stammer it's like an issue to like no I can't be a part of this group because they always they always have the eye on them, they always have the spotlight so I can't say certain words because or some uh, I never thought it like that, and I always try to to be myself. And if I want to to be out there and be loud, I will. Yeah. If I don't want to. You know, when I was younger, um, occasionally some of my teammates would uh, try to mimic my stammer, okay. or maybe try to um, um, take the Mickey out of me. As has that ever happened to you in the dressing room? Uh, this, this is the thing as well. It never happened to me. Okay. And I never get like in school bullied or something or like in training pitch. They they would they, they they try to to make fun of me. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a good guy. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I don't have an answer. But like, I don't like this this kind of stuff. You know, like to like to make jokes in someone, like how someone speaks or how someone looks or so. On. Like, because I will never do it on, on someone else. Yeah, of course. So that's why I think maybe people maybe just be like, no, like, yeah, yeah like, he's, he's a proper lad, why? Like, I don't know. Um, um, have you met any of the footballers who stammer? Um, no, no one. I, I didn't know, like, it was, obviously, I know it's, I know it's, people has a stammer, but yeah. I never heard of anyone until I had this interview. Okay. When you, someone in Leeds, Luke yeah, Ailing, uh, Luke Ailing, yeah, yeah, come across in the stone as well. Yeah. I didn't know about it at all. I don't know if you met um, an Italian football player called Alessio Cranio. Um, he's a goalkeeper. Um, I think he played a few games for the national team. And uh, okay. so I know his name, but I yeah, don't know about him. No? There's there's a, sort of quite a bit of uh, sort of stuff about the inter. Um, on the internet about him and his stammer and also how he manages his stammer. Um, just from a few years ago, there's a Spanish footballer called sort of Juan Fran. Yeah. Um, and also, um, I didn't know this, but there's sort of James Rodriguez. 
Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard someone yeah. said it. I don't know, but but this is the thing. Like I never. But this is the thing. It's the same. Like some some days or some period. I don't stand. It. Sure. So like if you see me one day, yeah, and we hang out and we do stuff and like stuff, and then you would be like, you can't stand. It. No, I was with him yesterday. <laughs> like he was cool. He was yeah. calm. Nothing. And then, and then I have a day. It's terrible. You know? It's so, big. It's because we're both as expert stammerers, we can hide it well. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> um, I mean, I suppose, I suppose when you've been playing football for sort of ninety minutes and you come off the pitch and you're asked to do an interview, I suppose, I suppose that's when you are the most tired, isn't it? It could be. It could be. But I never thought like in that way. Honestly, I never thought. But it could be because. Yeah. I stammer quite a lot of games. Like, but interviews of games is more. But it, it depends because if you're like in that interview I did, when I saw myself, I was like, this is not really me. Because this is not really the whole story, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't maybe usually speak like this every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, and people who see this one time is like, it's quiet. A lot, and it was a lot, and I didn't yeah. mind at all. But, but 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 when I see it again, it's like, yeah, I stammer. I, of course I do, but it's not like this every day, yeah. you know. So it's so it's a bit like yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And tiredness has, could have been a big factor. Could be, could so be. That's what I thought when I yeah. saw the interview. Could be. You know, so straight after the game. Yeah. So we're sort of talking about the famous interviewer. So. 16 million views. <laughs> it's crazy, right? That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And, and I mean, um, virtually all of the comments online were very, very positive. Yeah. Um, re really, really heartwarming to see. Were you surprised by the reaction? Very. Yeah. Very, because I've been there five years and I've done lots of you know, all my interviews just like this Sky, uh, BT, like, obviously in Sweden a lot in England. So like so like for me to 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 this interview to become this big was quite a shocking because I did it before and it never been something like you know and then all of a sudden it just you know, blew. Yeah. So the, so um a lot of the uh, sort of stories about that interview yeah. um, there was a lot of uh, sort of descriptions attached uh, sort of to the interview, and um, some of the labelling was things like you know sort of Ken uh, struggles with a stammer, used the word like uh, battling a stammer, oh, yeah. um, overcoming a stammer, um, suffering from a stammer. Do you think uh, sort of those kind of, uh, sort of labels are helpful? It depends how we are as a person, but for me I don't see it that way because I don't suffer. Sure. I'm happy every day. You know, I don't I don't feel like it's it's like a big issue that yeah. I can't overcome. Yeah. So when but but the thing is it's so, so like in another way I could understand the people behind the desk who who saying this suffers for her or for, for him. Yeah. It might be a suffering. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's not. Because you obviously weren't suffering because you just scored two goals and won the game. Exactly. For your team. So like, I was I was happy. Yeah. Well, a good place. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was. Um, what was it like in sort of representing your country at the Olympic Games, and then you also represented the Swedish national team. It's big. It's big for me. I think it's a huge, uh, like it's a huge part of me that I'm very proud of. Like to be to be able to be that good, like in the sport, and to be able to play for my country because it's it's special. It is, yeah. and obviously I I would like to play more for them, for my country, and and I think you are you are more like you are more out there on the public eyes goals when you play like in your own national team, yeah. you know and. Like and the small kids like seeing you think like if Ken can do it, I can do it. I was I was like a kid, 
just myself that saw the game so like it's like it's like it's like a dream for me to play in yeah. this level, you know, to play like Olympic or the Euros, you know, to, to play against these big team, big players and stuff. So it's like it's it's a big thing for me for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your proudest achievement in your life? Oh that was a deep question, wow. I was expecting that. Um I think it is to become a dad. Okay. Uh, I just had a kid for like soon a year ago. Okay. So Congratulations. She's, she's soon one. Yeah, thank you. I think it was a life changing for me. Yeah. A lot. Like obviously, I, 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 I've always loved kids and to be a father, but I never see, I never see it that big because I always thought like it's a part of life. Yeah. Like I will find a girlfriend who becomes my wife one day and hopefully we will have a kid, you know, like, it wasn't like a dream, it was like more like a plan, like it's, it's the way life it is, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And and to see my kid come come out and to see like my wife, and it was just amazing. And like even now, so when I, when I go home, see my see my kid, it's, it's amazing, like it's amazing. I just become so, Emotional about it. Yeah. When do you think that you accepted your summer? I'm a little bit the same because obviously I never see myself as a stammer. Yeah. Never. Like even if I had a worse day, I'm like, no, it's not me. Because yeah. on my best days, I don't do it. So yeah. like you know, also I was so I was always like in between. Yeah. So when, if someone says yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, but I would be a little angry about it because it's not me because my best days I don't do it. So because it, in my in my opinion, when I was a kid, it was like if you stammer, you do it every day. Yeah. Like it's like you go, it's like you go and eat every day, right? Yeah. It, like you know, you stammer every day, but if I don't stammer every day. It means that I don't really stand right. Like yeah. it just sometimes. Um, but then, like, so when I so when I'm older, I just I just cope. I just felt like even if I do it slightly or okay. like a lot, it's not a, like it's not everything about me. It's not yeah. like hey, I'm Ken Summer. I stammer. No, if you hear me speak and if you hear that I have a slight stammer or like I'm not, then so be it. You know, like. And then obviously I didn't choose to be this guy, to be this guy in the public eye and everything, because I had an interview that blew. And like now, all of a sudden, I'm like the face of Stammer. You know what I mean? I didn't chose it. I didn't like say to the club, like, okay, so let's go. I didn't. But like, I think in a way, it was good for me to just to just know that it, it's okay. Like I'm I'm the guy I am, no matter what. And I think it came at the right time because I like honestly think that I can help someone. And 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 and, and like if I can help one or two in the world, I'm a winner. Because it's all about in life to help each other. And if I can do it to just be myself, to just be not try to pretend, or just just be me. And if I can yeah. help someone else, of course. I think that's a, what struck me so much about the interview was that obviously you stammered, yeah. but you, you were very natural. Yeah. You were smiling. You're obviously happy because of your performance, yeah. and you. And you were confident as well. Mm -hmm. And like the fact you stammered uh, didn't impact on what you said, um, didn't impact on you know, like, a, your like performance for Watford on that day. So, so um, I think that's why it went viral yeah. because yeah, of that reason. Be. Yeah. But so I think is I think is the guy I, I want to be. Yeah. Like no matter what, yeah. I, I want to be the guy that brings. Positivity. Yeah. It brings like you can be yourself. It's a superpower yeah. to just be like to just trying to be you in every way. Like even in front of camera, off camera, 
your family yeah, with your friends. Yeah. So like, if it came across that way, obviously you have to yeah, yeah. Have you captained any teams during your time? Uh, not, not, not like that really, but I had the, I had the arm at some games, like in terms yeah. of maybe the third or the fourth, but never like uh, yeah. captain team like that. No. Yeah. Uh, would you like to go into coaching when you finish playing? I don't know if. Uh, Obviously, I would like to stay in in the sport yeah. as long as I can because I think it's it's there. I know about stuff like is is there. I have my knowledge, yeah. um, but uh, I'm open in every way. I don't know it, but it will be like a nice idea for sure yeah. to be a coach. Yeah. Yeah. So your video went viral in the UK. Yeah. Um, speaking to some um, friends who stammer in Sweden, it went viral in Sw Sweden as well. I guess that there'll be um, you'll be demand to um, um, act as a mentor for uh, young people who stammer. Um, is this something which you'd be interested in doing? Yeah, I might do it. Yeah, because for sure, like I, I feel like I have like responsibility to yeah. try to help. <laughs> Other people who who who, who like see see it like an issue maybe or like struggles you know so like if I can help someone yeah I might do it. Which um, obviously I spoke to you about my son who's thirteen who has a stammer and um, so um, what would you say to your thirteen year old self? Oh. Honestly, I would say like it would be all right. I know you feel it is hard now, yeah. Because I've been, I've been in school. I had like uh, to go up in front of the class to read a book. Some, some, the making not jokes but the laughing, and and it's like it's all right. You'll be all right as long as you think you'll be all right. Good. Because I think. I, biggest problem for us is like is is we who who like stammers think it's it's so big of a problem and it's so I don't know it's so it's so hard to speak it's embarrassing but I think the people you're you're speaking to think it's it's right. I think it's in your own head. Exactly. It's yeah. in your own war. You know, you like exactly. it's terrible, but I think it's it's all right. Thank you for your brilliant interview, Robin Ken. Um, so, just final question from from us at, uh, from from us as, at, at at Stammer. So, um, we have a massive conference uh, once every two years where we've got workshops, we've got events for kids, we've got events for families. Uh, speakers and panel pa -pa 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 panel events and uh, the next one is going to be sometime in August of next year so we were wondering if you'd like to be part of uh, of, of, of our conference and just say put it in your diary now okay. <laughs> okay. I'll try to do it. fantastic thank you thank you